pew, 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 pew. I love the thumbs little, up celebration. You don't get to see. It's like thumbs up confetti. Yeah, you don't get to see the thumbfetti on our screen. That just sounds like we... you have a speech impediment. Thumbfetti. <laughs> <clears throat> when we hit the button, everybody that's already put a thumbs up, it kind of explodes all over our screen. How's everybody doing? Uh, thanks for hanging out. This is the third hour of Primetime Guitar on Thursday. Uh, we know that Ike from Flipside Music was at a wedding, so apparently he didn't get to do his tonight. But you got to see some pretty cool stuff on Texas Toast Guitars. If you missed that video, make sure you go over to Texas Toast channel. They've got some really cool stuff for builders. I think I'm going to get a couple of those necks. Mm, so you're that, not going to get the... Well, I think I want to do the order project-y kind of thing. Oily stuff or <clears throat> whatever. And maybe get the oil, yep. And, um, you know, put together another time. I mean, if I'd have known there was going to be, like, an announcement like that, I would have taken a picture of the whiteboard we got to see when all this was, like, still in the making. Oh, I know, because we were at Steve at Maximum yes. Guitar Works Place, and he had, like, the SOS name and yes. all the acronym. It was all written on his whiteboard, and he was still working on it. And I actually got to use some of that oil. Um yeah, that was really cool. So anyway, check out Texas Toast Guitars. Uh, Steve at Maximum Guitars was on tonight. Uh, that was a pretty cool, pretty cool deal. So as far as we go, um, this is a Q and A, we go, and an FAQ. And you saw the thumbnail. Um, we're gonna do some questions that came in through Patreon. So the way this works is, I take a sip every once in a while. Um, we do chugging for chats, but it's really more of a sip. Um, super chats, I mean. Um, so we got some questions that came in through Patreon this week, and those are the ones that we feature on the screen. Also, YouTube members, we're back to posting how we're supposed to. We've got the whole thing sorted out. It got a little crazy while we've been on the road for the last six weeks, and now we're kind of back into the groove. The other thing is that we're back to having our live Patreon hangouts because that kind of got screwed up in May because of all the things and where the holiday fell and blah, blah, blah. There were some other things that we could not control. Um, so now we are back into control of all of that. Back, into control. back in control of all of that. So um, i tell you what we should do. We've got a few people watching down there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, awesome. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. <clears throat> Before evening. you get started with that, so people like jumped <clears throat> right in. Yeah. And Doc said, quick question. Alnico 8P90 with 11,500 wines. What do you think? I think it will darken it up a little over what um, you already have in your guitar because you have one of those Alnico 8 I love that he's like dreaming of what he's going to make next. Though. Yeah. I think it's awesome. It'll darken it just a little. <clears throat> Maybe he wants it dark. Maybe. Doug Santanella says, just received 17 of 40 of the Furch 40th Anniversary Edition. So, And there's lots of dollar signs after that with yeah, a surprised face. Yeah, that was the guitar. Uh, for those of you that miss or have not watched our news segment on Wednesdays, I was kind of proud of myself because, you know, it's neat that when people see this stuff in the news and they go buy it. So Furch, if you're paying attention... You know? Hello. Yeah. This thing is working. I love doing the new stuff. It is probably one of my favorite things that we oh, do. I can't interrupt you if your computer's turned down. Okay. Super chat. I probably they probably heard it, but I couldn't <clears throat> hear it. Um Super Chat from Dave the Do you say Pius or yeah. Pius? The Pius? Pius. Yeah. Um, thanks for the super chat, Dave. Um, he said, definitely have to try Steve's new oils. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Paul McNary has tried Steve's new oils and didn't even know it because Ooh. Steve, when we did that video at Steve's shop, we made the radius block. Uh. Well, Paul was wanting that radius, one of those radius blocks and I don't use a radius block. So I gave it to Paul just kind of you know passed it on because steve gave it to me so i just passed it on to paul and so but that oil was on that that block so yeah very cool awesome shane says hello from japan and he's using the name shane 
It Whoa. like took me a second. I was like, oh, that is the same person. That is Shane. So I don't know if you're just logged in wrong or if you switched your YouTube name. Yeah, very cool. Um, he actually asked a couple of questions tonight oh, as sweet. well. Uh, and I see Texas Toast is here tonight. Yep. Um, a couple of things. While Texas Toast is here, in case you have any questions about this, one of the things, we're, we're going to get into Patreon questions here in just a minute. Uh, and then we're going to get into this thumbnail topic because I think it's very, 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 very important. And I've been thinking a lot about um, guitar playing in general. But um, we are going out to Texas Toast in November. And we are going to wind pickups with their fabric top class, which is really, really cool. And by we, who do you mean you? I mean just me. Yeah, I guess you're staying here. September, there is a class open to build a guitar in five days with some pretty tricky stuff. Um, I'm hoping to get that guitar in a completed form very soon um, so that I can show you. We, um, it's almost done, but there were some, we made some last minute changes. So um, that guitar, because uh, we want to show you what you're going to build, but you're also going to wind your own pickups in, so in that class. So that's really, really cool. The other thing, so if you have any questions about that, Matt is in the comments, I think, as well as go to TexasToastGuitars.com and um, look at those classes. And then there's going to be some more stuff. So we'll, we'll chat about that as those things kind of come, come to play. Super chat from Paul <clears throat> McNary. Paul, thank you for the super chat. I hope you're doing well. He said, thanks. Wow. I think that's in response oh, to using this stuff. Because probably. he may not have known yeah. Yeah, that that was... Surprise! Now he's going to go back out and, and like give that thing a feel and be like, oh yeah, now I know how that feels. That stuff's really nice. It's, it's really cool. I have not been um, in the stuff that I've done in the past a fan of oil finishes on necks, but I could get into that stuff. Plus, it smells really good. Oh, really? The yeah. lemon, whatever? Yeah. It's very citrusy. It's very... Well, you don't really like citrusy smells. But it's... I like it. No, you like smells, like just not the taste. I don't do fake orange. That's it. And oh. it's not fake anyway. So, he already clarified that. Oh, yeah. It's real. Yeah, remember when you are a kid and you go to your grandma's house and they, she had those fake orange... Those orange wedges with the sugar on them? And you, like, put them in your mouth like this and, like, make them look at teeth? No. You don't remember doing that? They're like a gummy orange wedge? I know what you're talking about, but I never stuck them in my teeth. Because you didn't like them. But um, they were a very common grandma. With the little chalky marshmallows, those orange wedges were also in there. I don't... Keep in mind, my grandmother had Japanese candy. Oh, that's right. I didn't have traditional grandma candy. Yeah, her grandma was Japanese, so that changes everything. And it that was actually true. the little... Those gross little kid drinks with the foil top. Yeah. Shane that probably was, knows. That was the orange that killed it for me. Oh. For my okay. entire life. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Well, I tell you what. Let's get into some of these Patreon questions. Because okay. people asked some stuff this week. Which is really stuff. super cool and fun. Um, oh, Doc, since you're here, I don't think you were here last week when I actually unveiled the McKellen 12 that you got me as a gift. I appreciate it. It's this much gone. It's well loved. Yes. I really, really like it a lot. All right. Is that the one I showed yes. earlier? Uh, no, that's the super chat from earlier. Right. So start here? Yes. Okay. Sorry, y'all. It's like I haven't done this in a long time. Mm -hmm. Ivan, I'm crossing the border into Messina, New York to go shopping at an American Walmart. <laughs> Husbandly duties and all. So I might be missing the live show. But I saw Ivan in the comments and he said he was here because his wife, Jeanette, is driving. I was like, oh, I forgot oh, her name. Nice. Well, thanks, Jeanette, for driving so that Ivan could hang out with us. Tonight, I know that wasn't really a question, That's but he right. put it on, on Patreon, so I wanted to make sure that he got a shout out. I try not to look at these too much. But got your name on the wall. Yeah. Not because you're in trouble. Vincent, question one, pots or no pots? Every time I hear Matt talk about the no pot guitars, I giggle because I can so imagine someone plugging into an amp, dimed at 10, 
and not being able to turn down the volume. Okay. So, I've always been a volume, one volume, one tone guy. And I'm like, you're kind of shortchanging yourself if you don't use knobs. However... I have two guitars now that I'm playing all the time that don't have tone knobs. And I am enjoying them immensely. I don't know that I would go no knob, but I went one knob and the transition is pretty cool. I kind of like it. Uh, you know, I'm just saying I kind of like it. Yeah. Oh, question two. Question two. Light, medium, or dark roast? Dark dark are you trying to convince me no i don't have to you like dark too i like whoever makes my coffee she didn't mm. anyway what <laughs> you like dark too anyway go ahead <laughs> sorry <I'll... laughs> i just can't sometimes um i feel like oh we missed I the super chat interrupt for a super chat Thanks for the super chat, Doc. He said, awesome. Oh, cool. Probably talking about the yeah. McCallan stuff. Yeah, this is awesome. It's really good. <clears throat> All right. And that throws me off just enough. Oh. Did I just do that one? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. oh. Ivan, he does have a question. Okay. In pickup winding, what impacts inductance and capacitance the most? What are good ranges? <coughs> so, um, it's a combination between the strength of the magnet and the physical dimensions of the coil, as well as how much wire is on the coil. I would say if you were to take the biggest swing at it, the two things you would change is the strength of the magnet, as well as physically how much wire is on the coil but the thickness of the insulation on the coil so like double build versus single build also makes a difference too it's a sliding scale in one of the pickup classes in in tech in at texas toast there was one guy and he was asking me he's like okay what i really want to learn is how do you make these changes how do you make it to sound a certain way there are certain kind of, like I said, big swings you can make. But when it really comes down to it, everything is variable. Um, and when I say everything is variable, I mean everything is variable. I'm going to do a video coming up because after the news yesterday, Harley, and this is related to this question and the Harley Benton stuff, people almost in an accusatory fashion got in the comments and were like, well, don't you just copy people's pickups? No, I don't. I actually, we don't actually copy anybody's pickups. And of course, they, somebody accused me of lying like Amber Heard, which I thought was really funny. Um, but we don't because there are so many variables. So I want to do a video about kind of making a list and showing all the different things that you can change. Uh, for example, in a Strat pickup that you can change to make it sound different. There are like six or seven things that you can change right off the top of my head without even thinking about it hard um, to change the sound of a Strat pickup. Paul McNary, these are actually, this is yours. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, uh, it, it's very variable. So you're going to have to experiment. Um, in our next live Patreon hangout, Ivan, you'll probably be there because I know that you're one of those folks that's there all the time. We can talk about this some more and break it down a little bit, but I'm going to put some of that stuff in that video. Cool. Yeah, cool. Really cool. So did you say what are good ranges or that's something you're going to cover? Yeah, I want to cover it in a video because um, you can't, you almost can't put a number on certain things. Um, without understanding the, without whole, understanding picture, the yeah. whole picture. Yeah. All right, Shane, I watched the MGK setup video. Would the sitar sound problem mm -hmm. not occur on a guitar with a zero fret since the problem was in the nut? It depends 
so zero fret guitars still have a nut. It's more of a string guide. Um, but it also depends on how the string passes through the string guide and if the string guide is cut properly. I would say that the chances of having that sitar sound happen on a, on a zero fret guitar are probably a lot less. But it also, if the nut is cut right, it's not a problem. It wouldn't be something where you'd be like, I should have a zero fret so this doesn't happen. That doesn't make sense. <clears throat> cool. All right. And the final one from Patreon, Matt. Hey, Matt. So you've <clears throat> had the MGK SIG for a bit now. Do you like it more now or has the novelty worn off a bit? Is there anything you change about it now that you've had it for a little while? What is pretty much exclusively the guitar I've been playing every minute of the day for the last week? Definitely that one. That guitar. It looks so good. I don't think, <clears throat> I, I really feel like I've even seen you post some pictures and like those video clips and I'm like, there's no, you can't appreciate it. Mm-mm. -mm. It is something about the aesthetics of it. I mean, even like we showed our daughter today who hates pink. Mm -hmm. And she was like, that is the coolest guitar. Mm -hmm. It is just something about the way it pairs up and just all works together. I'm, those lines under the strings, like... It's cool. That does it for me right there, too. It just looks so clean. For me, it's the black neck. Really? The finish on the neck is... It's, this is a playing thing. Yeah. But that neck is so good. It's like, I cannot even tell you. Um, it's smaller. So like my, my Silver Sky, I really, really love. And that's a really big neck. <clears throat> this is a 14-inch radius on the MGK guitar. And I really, 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 really like it. Um, what I would change on it is the pickup is a little mid-rangey for me, and I would like, and this is crazy for me to say, but I would like it to be a little darker and a little higher gainier. Um, is that what you expect because of the feel? Like where does that yeah, come from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This thing makes you want to play heavier stuff on it, mm. and so it it already hits the amp really hard. Like it doesn't play clean very well because it's. The pickup isn't made to be clean. It just is a little mid-rangey honky for me. So I, which is weird because normally that's like like the center punch. We do that on purpose. So I want to try putting a super eight in it and seeing if I can get some clarity, but get the mid-range scoop it a little bit. I'm I'm really interested in playing with a couple of pickups in that guitar. That being said, it's so good the way it is. This is the thought. Okay. So this is a segue between so into... the novelty worn off? No, not at all. We you don't get to chat. segue yet. <clears throat> okay. We got a super chat from Thomas Tourville. Thanks, Thomas Tourville. And then a little bit further down, he just says, Hi, Dylan and all. So I don't know if you're just saying hello. Thank you for the super chat. But if you have a question, I'll be looking for it, Thomas. Yeah. Um. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Uh, I'll probably send you an email in the next day or two, actually. Um... <coughs> We gotta ship him a guitar. So I really, 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 really like this pink guitar. I love it. Really? A lot. Yes. I How many really like was that? it. Is I that don't like know. a really scale? Oh, that could be a new debate. Oh, really I mean a really scale. A really scale. Because you say really, really a lot. And I that do. time you said really, re I don't know how many times you That's said it. That's true. I did. You know, um, it's just fun. It makes me want to play. That's so what's, what's funny about that is that guitar and the purple one. So the Kramer up there with the Floyd Rose, I played that last night too. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, but on my Instagram at Dylan Talks Tone, I've been putting videos up. Like I've actually been playing like every day and every night. Like I put the Catalyst 100 in the living room. Um, and so that I can just sit and like watch the hockey game last night and just play. And that's what made me think of this thumbnail tonight. Got another super chat. Um, <coughs> super chat from Kiwi Quarters. Cool. 
Um, as a player, I've only ever used a volume knob on stage. As a builder, I want all the switches and wiring tricks <laughs> and push pulls I can fit. Right? Isn't that funny? Like, you do want, because you want to try making the stuff and you'd want to try wiring the stuff and all that kind of stuff. But uh, for me, it's different guitars. So the Kramer only has a volume knob. I kind of wish that had a tone knob, actually. Thank you for the super chat, by the way, Kiwi. I don't think I said that. Yes. Um, I think it's because I don't like the pickup in the purple guitar, though. Where is that guitar? It's right there. I, I was thinking about the pink one. Somebody said, you should give it to me because it matches my shirt. It definitely does not match my shirt. That oh, no. Like it's a, a whole next, it's a whole level, of next level of pink. Yeah. Um, but what's so those two guitars, <clears throat> I was looking at the row of guitars and that's what was in the thumbnail um, this week, this today. I was literally looking at those guitars and I was thinking, I have this Gibson SG Jr. up there, right? Which mm -hmm. is like vintage spec, old school, wraparound bridge, P90, noisy, kind of messy doesn't intonate perfectly and but that is like a vintagey specky guitar right and then i've got a strat over here um and i've got some other stuff that's really traditional and it people get on me all the time for like well i don't know why you don't like vintage guitars i actually love them super chat from Vinny. Vinny's world thank you for the super chat he said pink Guitars really, <laughs> really, really, really rock. Mm -hmm. R A W K. Is that like <clears throat> rock? That's about how you would say it. Rock. Anyway. But I, so now I've got these other guitars, right? <clears throat> that are more modern stuff. And um, it make the, the different guitars make you play different. Um, I. There are so many people, and I, I don't want to make anybody people anybody feel bad for the guitar choices that they made. I think if you like what you like, you can like what you like. But what I think happens a lot of times is people get into a, this is what it should be. This guitar, this, I can only play X fretboard radius. I can only play thin necks. I can only play thick necks. I only like X, Y, Z, whatever. The pink guitar and the purple guitar for me, because I'm kind of like that, actually. People think I don't like vintage stuff, but I would really prefer a couple vintage guitars and nothing else. The only reason I have so many of these other things is because of my job. So, kind of. So, playing these more modern guitars has made me play different. It's made me play different stuff. It's made me play different, want to play different amps, try different things. And it's made guitar playing fun again because it gets you out of the rut of this is how it should be. And it's even gotten the channel out of the rut because I'm... I feel like the whiteboard catches people's attention and then we just got a random OJ did it. <laughs> That, that was good, <clears throat> Kyle Fisher. I like that. Yeah. So I would encourage you to go, if you don't have, you know, if you play seven and a quarter fretboard radiuses because you think that's all you can play, go to the store and, and don't just be like, oh, yeah, I don't play that. Take a 14-inch radius. Take a 10 to 14-inch compound radius. Take a, make sure it's set up properly. Don't do it at Guitar Center because you won't get a good impression of it. Or buy something used if you're in a position to, to, to experiment. But play a guitar that you wouldn't normally play. Through an amp that you wouldn't normally play. In a non-pressure situation, like where you, you know, not where you have only 30 seconds to try it and decide you don't like it. <clears throat> but mentally go into it like, how can I use this not to be better than my friends or have better gear than my friends or compare to somebody else or any of those kind of normal guitar group garbage that people do but for your own self be like pick this guitar up 
and learn that you, you'll you find out that you can do something you couldn't do before, or you'll find a sound you couldn't find before, and it will affect your the rest of your guitar playing. I just, I don't know. I, this has gotten so much more fun for me lately. So much more fun. Super chat from Rick Bonneville. Thank Thanks, you for Rick. the super chat. He said, you have good taste in scotch <laughs> and woman. And I appreciate that he didn't say women like there were <clears throat> more than one. No. Although we did watch uh, this Netflix special about... Uh, oh, are you saying you would like sister wives? No. No. About Like 40 of them? No, like 76 of them or something. He needs some sister yeah. wives. Anyway. Yeah. There was a... Yeah. We watched a series on it. Netflix. It was cringy. Cringy. But it was, yeah. Yep. Thanks, Rick. I think next week's, because the the MGK video is going to come out Monday, I think. So next Thursday, I think the topic is going to be invariably who should get a signature model. Hmm. Because Haven't we done that before? I did a live stream about it when I ordered that guitar. Right. A year ago. But it has been such a hot topic since I got this guitar that we're going to talk about it. Because a lot of people don't understand the economics of how guitars are made. So <clears throat> we're going to talk about that next week probably. You ready to chat about some comments? Yeah, let's do some comments and some questions that have come in. Jim Zentaris, what Jim. do you call a bass pickup that internally is split in two coils? It's a humbucker still. Yep. It's a humbucker still. Jeffrey Egan. Does anyone use metal ba base plates in non-Tele single coils? Yes. And I have a video coming and a new pickup coming. Ooh. Stay tuned. <clears throat> Martian Murray. Howdy. New guitar day for me. 25th anniversary Reverend Six Gun HPP. Just flexing, LOL. Dude, that's so cool. And you know what? That Those are so cool. Six guns are neat, man. And if you need some new P90s for that thing. Zane you, you Noss. Question. What is your view having 72 modes using all kinds of coil split, push, pull, series, parallel, etc.? And what is your opinion regarding <clears throat> the push, push coil split and the 10 way freeway switch? please. So I have a guitar with a freeway switch and I have to use it because of how the guitar is wired. Uh, it's a six way freeway. It's not a 10. Personally, first of all, if you try to order that crap from me in the future, I will not build it. We are only going to do simple five way switch Telly, we actually might stop making pick cards because it's getting out of control because people want so many options. And <clears throat> there's two sides to it. One is if you could only have one guitar and you needed it to do everything, then you would need all that stuff. The practical side of that is you don't actually use the guitar that way when you play live because you really only have two or three sounds and the guitar only needs two or three sounds and you don't you can't practically do that so like a 10-way switch is like okay for this guitar solo i'm going to be uh shifted into low range three from the back with my volume like that's too much to think about and then at the end of the solo i'm going to go two and then up and then you know like who does that nobody does that i mean Maybe Some, somebody maybe somebody does, but it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to do it. Uh, what was the other part of the question? I have a super chat. Jim Woodard, <clears throat> thank you for the super chat. He says, LOL, sister wives, don't get me started on quote reality TV. We need <coughs> a reality guitar show. This was not a reality show, it was a documentary, by the way. It was a documentary, just to clarify, and it was I would really well done. Never watch a reality show about this. No. Uh, and you're watching the reality show right now. Reality guitar. guitar show? Yeah, because this is... We don't have enough drama for a reality show. It is true. We have no sparks. Sparks? Yeah, there's always like a grinder oh, and like oh, sparks. Oh. 
And we don't throw things at each other and we don't get mad. We yell. Like, never yell at each other or argue about anything. Walk else. out, start crying, have to do like the monologue crying in the like yeah. separate area. Know why, you know what I mean? Sure, sure. You know how they do yeah. that? Yeah, they go over in the closet. Like they're in the interview room and they're like. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. We don't do any- We don't even do that. Like, I don't even remember the last time we really had an argument. We don't, we don't even do that stuff. So we don't have enough we drama. We don't do that stuff. We don't. We don't have enough drama for a reality TV. <clears throat> I want to make sure we get the rest of the dude's question because he had a bunch of little questions. Okay, well, I have another super chat. Oh, okay. Meester? Meester Dinardu. Nice. <laughs> Great QA, Dylan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much, man. Meester. That's the. What's that? <clears throat> Car show you watch, oh. where he says Weezer or something. Oh yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. I that's, heard when I was trying to say. You're talking Weezer. about um, you're talking about Who's Garage, yeah. Anyway, he watches a lot of Dude. stuff. I just hear. Right. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, flip back over what, there. I just want to make sure. I, I don't know what where you're talking about. I um, probably already clicked it off. Oh, did you? Okay. Who um, was it? Do you remember? He was asking about no, but he was asking about different switching stuff i just don't use it all i don't think anybody really uses it all um i like a coil split i like a parallel which we're going to do a video on soon because i've got a guitar that does a parallel thing um but not in the same guitar you know i think in different guitars like i don't need it all in one with a bunch of switches and space oh, station looking stuff. here it is um <clears throat> Push, push, coil split, and the 10-way free switch. Yeah, I guess we covered it. Okay, I just want to make sure. Oh, we got another super chat. Um, did I get all these? All right, let me go down, down, down. Sexy cat. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. You called it before I could even put him oh, on. I, I just know his little thing. He's been following us for a long time. Sassy cat, thank you for the super chat. Um, how much hate directed at that guitar is because it's really hate for MGK. Also, did you ever make that video on how a Charlie Christian pickup works? I did not make the Charlie Christian video because I've never been able to get my hands on one to show it properly. And I want to do that. And they're very expensive. As far as the MGK thing. Yeah. I, so... A lot of people don't like him because of what he said about Slipknot and how they're like dad rock, whatever, blah, blah. But he's right. So hate me if you want. But he was 100% right. And he said it for clickbait. People do that. I thought they were friends. They they are friends. That's that's, the thing. It wasn't... So I listened to a whole thing with... um, I listened to a whole interview with a uh, drummer guy, triplets, um, Blink-182, married to Kourtney Kardashian. Um, Travis Barker. Thank you. Um, I just, he does those triplets. <laughs> That's like his thing. Um, anyway, <coughs> and he was like, it was all made up. It was all fake. It was all made up. It was all fake. It was just, they were just goofing with each other. And somebody got a little bent about it, but they were pretty much just goofing with with each other. The other reason I think they don't, people don't like him is because A, they don't think he can actually play guitar, which is BS. Google it up, watch it on YouTube. The dude can play. He might not play music that you like, but he can play the guitar. Whatever you listen to today, he definitely plays music I like. Yeah. You and Brianna both started singing everything that he was playing. Oh yeah. He can play and he really can play. Um, I think because he wears everything pink, because he has a kind of, I don't give like a crap about anything about anybody that says anything about me attitude. I think he gets a lot of flack for, uh, being overly direct about what he says and doesn't sugarcoat anything. Is this sounding familiar at all? You know, like, if you don't like him, you don't like me. Because I, I just don't care. I I love that. And I like the fact that he's just going out. He's touring. He's selling out shows. He's doing... Super chat from <clears throat> Mr. Goat. Thank you for the super chat. Girl cat 
get off the <laughs> pewter. <coughs> and why. And why. Um, Thank I, you. I also think that people don't like him because he's successful and they don't think he should be. But what people don't understand is the work that the man has put in for over a decade. And if you follow his social media game and you look at how he is marketing himself mm -hmm. and his product and his image, he's doing it. If you did it the same way, you would not have a real job and you could play guitar for a living. That's uh, all I'm saying. Um, and I think people are jealous of that in a way. Um, you know, I'm probably going to, there's probably be a bunch of stuff in the comments just because I said those things, but I like to look at the person and really, if, if somebody's really hated on in the industry, um, we both do this kind of like look into the story, like see, remember when we were in, uh, we were in Cleveland, I think. And it really kind of came up because there was a playlist or something we were listening to us. And you started looking. He's like, oh, he owns a coffee shop and he's doing all this other stuff. Well, he stuff was in the outside. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, so he was in the we Rock were, and Roll Hall of Fame. I was That's curious. Right. Because I <clears> why is he in didn't here? know anything. Um, yes. But you take those opportunities. I take those opportunities to learn. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. maybe I'm missing something. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And and it was. He, he definitely has like a scrappy story. And I mm -hmm. like that. And um, and it's real, too. It's not, it's not Kid Rock. Right. It's real. You know, Kid Rock, all that redneck stuff is all fake. This dude's... He's, I mean, I think he still has a real scrappy story. He just has... No, his parents were pretty rich. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's fake. So, but that's the thing. I think, and then the fact that he lives in a trailer in the middle of a field and drives a Rolls Royce, it's just kind of a bunch of made-up garbage. But what I he like... He doesn't live in a trailer? He does, but he lives in this double-wide trailer in the middle of this big field, but I don't think that's his actual house, and he drives a Rolls Royce up to it, and it's like this weird, stupid Sounds show. Sounds amazing to me. Well, I mean, you know, I guess. But, I don't know, I just don't feel like anybody needs to be ragged on, especially if they're making more money Why than me. Why are you ragging on Kid Ralph? Um, I'm not, because I actually have friends that play guitar for him. Like, I guess I'm not, I'm just saying... There's different... Okay, so I guess the real thing for calling me out on that. The, the real thing... No, really. It, I mean, being honest, the real thing is that everybody markets their image differently. I kind of don't like how Kid Rock does it, but... But he's successful. <clears throat> but he is successful. And a lot of people that really work. love him. And it does work. It does work. And I enjoyed his show. He was really good live. Yeah. And Brianna said that Machine Gun Kelly was really good. Yes. Because she just got to see him. In fact, he's playing in Atlanta tonight. And I was like, dang it. He's actually playing somewhere where we're going to be in the next few weeks. Too. Of course. Are we so, going to be there when he's there? Uh, I don't think so. He's going to be in Jacksonville when we're in Daytona. That's not that far. Mm -mm, we might go see him. Anyway, wouldn't that be awesome? I want an MGK t-shirt. I should just order one. Um... <clears throat> Let's see. Um, probably a little ranty. Chuck C said, <clears throat> "I've seen MGK open for Fall Out Boy. I'd never heard of him, but he put on a decent show. I love that <clears throat> that you even. How many people do we know? Like, oh, I don't know who this is. I'm gonna go do something else. But I don't know. It's cool when somebody can catch your attention and make you watch if you yeah. don't know anything about him. There's a reason why he has people's attention, and that is more important, in my opinion." I can't play guitar says you don't even have to like it after you look into it, but it's great to learn. Even if you learn that you still don't like the artists. Exactly. I totally agree. But the thing about you, whoever you are, what was his name? I can't play guitar. Okay. So I can't play guitar. Oh, but he has a logo and everything. You like, probably can. I can't play you probably can play guitar. But the thing about you, I can't play guitar is that you probably now after doing research about somebody, even if you don't like them, you know, if it's Taylor Swift, if it's MGK, if it's any of those people that guitar players call, you know, get all on. The chances are, is that after you did that research, you you are now, you may have been before prone to go into some Facebook group or onto one of my posts or in one of my videos and made some stupid comment. Where now, you did that that education, you learned about them. Okay, so maybe you still don't like them. But I think it was a generic <clears throat> statement. Like, we could have done that research and still been like, eh, right. I don't care about this dude. 
But I'm saying he could do the yeah, same yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And chances are, once he does that, he won't go, you know, being all hateful in some comment. Because he, like, learned a thing and gained value out of it, even though it wasn't. I think the person that would take the time to learn mm-hmm. is never the internet troll. Ah, uh, 100%. Period. That's true. That's interesting. That's really interesting. Because the people that are even on our channel to try to learn stuff. And Daniel, <clears throat> no, no, but I'm probably really botching that, says MGK stuff is good. Love it regardless of his personality. And I like his rap too. Yeah. So his hip hop like stuff is his... real good. All right. Super chat from 94 Dodge Dude. Thank you for the super chat. He's been on before. Hey guys, I was wondering if there is any specific reason acoustics, even expensive ones, don't ever come with locking tuners. Thanks. Huh. Hmm. Probably because... They wouldn't really... Okay. I know why. Because most... So, most guitars, acoustic guitars, have bridge pins. Breed Loves don't. There's a couple of brands that don't. Most guitars have bridge pins. The reason you have locking tuners is really for the convenience of a second, like a third hand. And it makes it faster to string the guitar. So I think it would be because it wouldn't really work the same because you actually have to pull the string up and set the tension against the pin so that the pin doesn't fall out and then string the guitar. But you don't need that third hand sort of. Um, Everybody thinks, a lot of people think, that locking tuners are for tuning stability. And they don't do anything for tuning stability. It's literally for the convenience of stringing. So when you're playing live, for example, with an electric guitar, it makes it quicker to to do that. With an acoustic guitar, the same steps would still be in play, even if you had locking tuners. So I think that's probably why. But that is literally a guess because no one has ever asked that question before. So this is literally the first time I've ever thought about it. But you're right. Huh. Um, Interesting conversation, Swift. Kiwi Quarters said, there are people who don't like Taylor Swift. She's America's sweetheart. And people were like, no, she's not. (laughs) (laughs) So that's a good example. So like, I, oh, sorry. I don't know. Taylor Swift is one of those ones for me, like, you can't help but like a couple of songs because it, some of them are really catchy. But I don't particularly care for like the passive aggressiveness that she seems to write in. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't make some songs any less catchy. Like you have to give. Yeah. She is doing <clears throat> a thing. Well, and this, she is successful. So you this call to... this calls me to a, a conversation me and you had the other night. And that is, why do you listen to music? Everybody listens to music for a different reason. Mm -hmm. And it is my, this is, again, this is going to sound negative, but I mean this for a constructive purpose. I feel like guitar players listen to music so that they can compare themselves to said music so they can have technical conversations with themselves like i wonder how he's doing that what is gear is he using when you go to a gig it's all the there's those memes about like what's on his pedal board like is his rig as good as mine like there's all of that and like what what gear is he using what pedal board is he using what pedals are he using what amp is he using i wonder how it's set all these nerdy things and when you go and listen to like a a tiktok some uh, playlist on Apple Music, and it's all this hip hop, and and guitar players will be like, that is the dumbest music ever. Music sucks in 2022. The thing is though, if you turn that TikTok stuff, I don't care who you are, <laughs> if you turn that TikTok stuff down, 
and kind of barely hear it in the background while you're driving, you will start going, you know, and you'll start tapping your foot and you'll start because you're listening to music to listen to music. Yeah. And if you don't know that it's TikTok music, that's probably part of the problem, too. Right. (laughs) So I think why do you I listen to music because I love music. I don't listen to music to figure out how they made it. I don't do that. 100%. Now, I will get into little things where I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to watch all the YouTube videos about a certain song because I want to learn about it. Mm -hmm. Or a certain artist and understand. And I watch every rig rundown on Premiere Guitar. Like, I do do those things. But when I'm in the car, I don't be like, eh, this isn't a guitar song. I'm going to skip it. In fact, if it's a guitar song in a car, 90% of the time, I do skip it. And I listen to stuff that is for the sake of just driving down the road and your head's going and you're listening to music and you're just having fun. And that's why. And I just, I don't know. I, that's what I want to bring to the world is the fun of all of this. I'm like so tired of all the nerdiness. <clears throat> all right. Super chat from First Sergeant Richard. Thank you for the super chat. Thank you. He says, four years ago, I fully retired and committed to learn to play and build 100 guitars. Thanks greatly to your channel and some others, I have hit my 75th build. Dude. Thank you, Dylan. Peace to you. That is really incredible. That is so cool. Way to go, Richard. And thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, I love it when people learn stuff, and even if they take little tips and just, that is really yeah, that's cool. great, man. That's so cool. <clears throat> Don't start talking yet. No, what else we got? <clears throat> oh, we got another super chat. All right, super chat from Doc. Thanks for the super chat, Doc. Anyone who has spent time making music, especially significant time in a recording studio, doing takes over and over is not going to slam someone's music, even if they don't like it. They understand the struggle. Yeah. That was one of the things I said last week about uh, even, you know, anybody that's tried to make their own pickup, like you, Doc, will not complain about how much these cost or get all weird about it. Because it's like, oh, this is harder than it looks. Or guitar making. You know, they won't complain about a $1,500 guitar because they will understand the, the work that goes into it. And I think that applies oh. to a lot of stuff. Sorry, I have to ban somebody. Ooh. Oh, nice. Sorry about that. Oh, and another one. Is that a different? Oh, I wonder if they're... Um... Sorry, y'all. We got some spammers. Yeah, they see them. <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't... Paying attention because I stayed, um... All right, I think we got him. <laughs> Get rid of that, too. Sorry, y'all. <clears throat> you know the thing, too? Is it's really forming my... How I even handle the channel. Like, like what you said. People that troll aren't there to have fun. I didn't say that. You didn't, but... That's the way I take it. Like, they're not there to appreciate the same things that we appreciate about why we do all this stuff. And I'm like, I was thinking about this the other day. I think I heard it on some podcast somewhere. And it was like, basically like, if you're doing what you love and you enjoy it, then just share that with people and they're going to like what you are doing. And that's all you need. You don't need to worry about the people that don't like it. Like, so I'm not. And I think just focusing more on the fun. I've had so much fun. Since I got back from Colorado, well, the whole thing in Colorado, meeting all these new people and seeing all the, uh, well, here, here's what I'll tell you. We taught 17 people how to learn to make, how to make pickups. And I think less than half of them actually even knew how to play guitar in the first place. Which means they just wanted to enjoy the thing. Like it wasn't like this nerdy little thing. Like it's not a bunch of whacked out nerds coming to these workshops. Like, well, that are so nerdy that are like, they're annoying to be around. It's not. 
they're all just super cool dudes that are like, I just want to do this. And curious. And I just want to try to this thing. Yeah. Like even he start he's playing making one hundred guitars over however many years, like it starts with one and the curiosity and the fun and I'm like you know what, that's what all of this should be. That's what all of it should be. And so that's why I was like I'm buying pink guitars. I'm buying purple. Well, the pink guitar I waited for a year for, but I am literally gonna just buy whatever I want and try whatever I want and have a lot of fun doing it from now on. I have. I actually was in a meeting yesterday <clears throat> with a company, and I'm not going to say who it is yet, uh, who is sending me some stuff to review that it's for fun. It's guitars, but it's for fun. It's not like to be compared to X, Y, Z. It is a guitar product that is fun. And I'm really excited about it. Like, that's why the, the MG... Dastardly Dave said there were a few nerds in there. There were, but there were. That is true. But they were there because they were enjoying it. And they wanted the experience. It wasn't to be better than the next guy. It wasn't to be like, well, what did you do? This is what I... Like, there was no comparison between... You know what I mean? In the negative way. It was like, hey, check it out. We're all making this cool stuff together. It wasn't that weird, like, looking over at your fellow guitar player's stuff kind of thing. It wasn't, there was none of that. And I really appreciated that. It was so fun. It was so fun. You got some more questions over there? Uh, yeah. You can keep talking. <clears throat> so, well, I mean, this they is... just stack up. Like I just want to share this because I think it's so cool. All right, I do want to find one comment because he thinks I missed it, and I don't mm. think I did. Okay, Rick Bonneville, yes. can you recommend a better preamp system for my almost brand new Ibanez SR875? Pickups are Bartolini. Bartolini's. Bartolini. <clears throat> I'm surprised you don't like the Bartolini preamp that came in it, and I do not have a suggestion for you because. I do not build bass stuff that much. I have built a couple of basses in my life. But what I will tell you is I have one client that I built a bass for and he says it's the best bass he's ever had ever. And he has like $10,000 basses. And I used an Aguilar preamp in it and he loves it. So that might be a thing. <clears throat> All right. Another super chat from Sean McMillan. Thank you for the super chat, Sean. He says, hey, it's good to have y'all back. P.S. Dylan, check your email later, please. I sent you a technical question about my P90 install. I got that email and I was trying to find today the wiring diagram that I used when I built that and I can't find it. So give me a minute and I will get back to you because... That's the only one of those I've ever built. And I was trying to find the the wiring diagram. I don't know why you're having a problem. It doesn't make sense. So I've gotta I've gotta find that so I can I can look at it. He said Rick said the preamp is not Bartolini. Oh, maybe it's some kind of generic thing. Um Aguilar ugh. It's an Aguilar preamp, but I don't know enough about them to tell you models and stuff actually it was um it was provided by the customer he gave it to me and i just installed it when we built a guitar <coughs> so i can't really tell you I, I apologize i'm not a bass player and i i don't know enough about them um and what bass player what bass players want you know what I mean? thanks for the super chat um, van shank guitars thanks for the super chat he says this all makes me want to like pink lol I mean, why not? I mean, yeah, why not? And it's just a color. Another super chat from <clears throat> Dave the Pious. Thanks, Dave. He says Aguilar for the win. Yes, I, I'm. Thanks I'm fairly suggestion. confident in saying that I know just about everybody um, that I've ever worked with has wanted that 
Okay, here it is. Are you ready? I found it. It is the Aguilar Rick. You can rewind this later in, you know, whatever. But, um, actually, can you type this in? Yeah. Type in OBP dash 3TK. And that's it? Yep. That is the model number of the preamp that I used in that base. And he loves it. It was at the top of the Google search. I was like, I recognized it as soon as I saw uh. it. <clears throat> it's a three band EQ. It's really cool. Nine volt or 18 volt. He's running 18 volt and has. Very cool. All right. Kenneth Crickmore. I still need a neck pickup to match the Tele Bridge pickup you gave me last year from your winding with identical parts along with the other pickup guy. Finishing my strap build first, though. Cool. Cool. Yeah, just let me know whenever you want to order a neck pickup for it. <clears throat> That's when we did that thing with John. I was trying to think. Mm -hmm. um, Tommy Saints capacitors. In your own opinion... Pio caps or snake oil? Oh, pa our paper and oil caps, snake oil. Um. Oh, is it? Is, is paper in oil not paper and oil? It's paper and oil. I did not know that yeah. all this time. <clears throat> yep, it's literally two wires rolled up in oil. Oh. Mm -hmm. In paper, it's, it's a paper strip and it's rolled up in oil. Um. Use what you want. But don't waste your money. That was easy. Doesn't make any sense. Orange drops are cool. Your guitar will not sound better with $15 capacitors in it. Windsurf Maui. I hope you'll use the whiteboard when you do the pickup variables video. I will take that into consideration. Yes. Um, can it crick more? What about changing out a pot and cap if you have a 250k pot up it to a 500 and change to 0.047 cap? That might brighten it up some. Yes, that would be my choice. <clears throat> Mr. Goat, excited for my T90. Please don't stop pick guards until I can fund the HH strat. I get you. I get you. Your T90 stuff is uh, going to be made next week. We made something like 29, 30, 40. Almost 40 pickups in the last couple few days. We are catching up. I promise you. It's been crazy. George <clears throat> Ward. Thinking about a silver sky in midnight rose like yours. Then met Mark Letary in person and his Fiore sounded awesome. Bridge humbucker probably helped. Both colors look great. Which would you get? <laughs> so I have a Silver Sky in Midnight Rose. And I have a Mark Letary on back order. <laughs> Both. That's what I hear. Both. Both. They are so completely different guitars. Such completely different guitars, but I will tell you that I played the Mark Letary before I played the Silver Sky, and I wanted to buy the Mark Letary before I wanted to buy the Silver Sky. Yeah. I love that guitar. <clears throat> the reason I didn't buy it is because it is so perfect that it doesn't need anything. And Leslie is like, what are you going to make a video about if it doesn't need anything? And I'm like, well, I guess that's true, and I didn't buy it, but I'm going to buy one. Joshua Grombacher, I feel it's getting old that we have to justify our passions to a bunch of bitter losers that spend all their time <laughs> behind a keyboard rather than playing their guitars. That's why I just, you Amen. just, that's why you just have to have fun. You just have to take it to the next level and be like, you know what? I'm having fun, man. And, and, and don't engage those people and just engage the folks that are having fun. Even if they're not having the fun, same fun. Even if they're playing a pink guitar and you don't like pink guitars, but they're still having fun, hang out with them. Don't hang out with the people 
that are grumbling about the pink guitar. You know what I mean? Yeah. Positive. <sighs> Hang on, we got a spammer again. <clears throat> They're like hitting you hard, man. They really want to be here. Um. I feel like I've made like some kind of next level if we're having to deal with spam. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, I think I had another one. No, maybe I got it. Yeah, no. don't ban Rick Bonneville. Oh, it says was hidden. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I feel like I was gonna say something and I forgot. Oh, um. That we're just about out of time. Oh crap! We're supposed to hard stop at nine, y'all. We don't have to. We should. We don't have to. I need to pay attention to the time better. Um, Shane, I don't know how to say your last name. Philosopher is what I'm going to say. The Toast guys must be cheering for the Avalanche. Are you guys cheering for Tampa Bay? Um, so. I don't want hockey. I, this is hard because I'm from Michigan, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where all of the good hockey players come from. <laughs> and I have friends who are either on NHL teams or are heavily involved with NHL teams all over the country. And so um, I had a really good friend that played on the Avalanche for a long time. He's no longer there. So I've been a fan of the Avalanche for a long time. Uh, but I also have a friend who is in the executive offices of the lightning so it's a hard um i don't have a dog in the fight this year i just want to see overtime games every night <laughs> is there a game <clears throat> it's friday oh um all right jim cunningham know anything about square poles used in guild pickups uh i know i can't get them and i know so the answer really is no. They are very cool. And I would like to do something about that. But I have not been able to. Jim Woodard, I don't justify my guitars. I love them. And it doesn't matter what other people think. Coming from a guy who has a Gibson tattoo right here on his arm. so Jim does? Yeah. Who's Jim? Do I know Jim? No. Oh. But I do. And he's awesome. And he has a podcast. Check out his oh. podcast. The Practical Guitarist, I think is the name of the podcast. I've been on it. Oh. It's very fun, yeah. Um, Shane again. Shane Philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> when you set up a guitar, do you know how to say his last name? I don't. Okay. Um, when you set up a guitar with very high action, over two millimeters, should I tweak the truss rod or just lower the saddles? If you want it to be that high, uh, I would still... Oh, you're trying to set up a guitar with... Wait. This is when you set up a guitar with very high action. So I don't know if that's the goal or okay. if it already has high action. The truss rod is not... Okay, it's relevant to the measure measurement. But it is not a factor in how high your strings should be. So the truss rod... And this is a misconception a lot of people have. The truss rod is a factor in the tension of the guitar not in the string height it is affects it a little bit but you want you want the proper relief in the neck no matter what your final string height is going to be so you want to fret it at the first fret and at the last fret where it hits the body and then halfway between you want like a business card like ten thousandths or five Ten thousandths for most fret work. In between, like when you tap on it like this, you just want it to rattle just a little bit. And if there's more than that, tighten it up. If there's less than that, loosen it a little bit. But that should not have any effect on how high you want your action to be. Adjust the action with the saddles. So yes, always check your truss rod. But don't use it. To determine your final action. He said it came with high action. I want it down to about one millimeter. Yep. Check your truss rod to establish the, the surface, the playing surface. Which is a little bit interactive, but you do not use the truss rod to affect your final string height. 
you use the saddles for that. Yeah. All right, add a TM. Dear Dylan, because of the current situation of everything getting so much expensive and the products are not getting more expensive than the parts, and the end products are not getting more expensive than the parts, so the profits are being demolished for you. Um, I don't know if that's a question or he's asking if that's happening to oh. me. So you can buy us a coffee. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, you can buy us a coffee. Um. So yes, parts prices are going up. Component prices are going up. Mm -hmm. Um, we are really fighting price hikes because we know that making our products more expensive will not make it any easier for you to buy them, even though I really should. But I don't want them to be more expensive. So what we have been talking about lately is making some changes in the business so that we bring more, that I don't buy as many parts. Maybe we make some. Maybe we bring some of, maybe we, um, what do they call that? Like vertical manufacturing where we make more of our own parts where we invest a little bit more in the company so that uh, we're making our own stuff instead of buying it from somebody else and then we can control that a little bit more. So we're working on some things. I would rather invest in the business and keep everything the way it is than have my magnet guy call me and be like, hey, this is going way up so now we have to raise prices. I'm trying, I'm really trying. I had to ban somebody else. Jim Woodard said, good God, that naked guy doesn't give up. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I don't know why that was so funny. Um, all right. Zane Nas. Question. Dylan, the way you talk about tone is amazing, which personally I have learned a lot. What is your opinion regarding Telecaster with three pickups? What is the best thing? plate control figuration please uh i mean honestly just a strat one uh with a switch so okay i think there's a, a five-way situation you can do with a push pull on the volume knob because you still want to have the neck and the bridge together so that's what i would do David Kornblatt, why do people use Alnico for humbucker pickups? Because they like how they sound. They are a, um, they're their own thing, really. Mm. Are you a Strat dude or a Les Paul dude? I'm on all the things, dude. Um, One more, right? There's three. Yeah, I'm in all the things, dude. I actually really want a Les Paul super bad, and I don't have one. If you had a Corvair, how would you mod it? I would make it electric. I've already thought about that because I know a guy who has a Corvair sitting in his yard, and I would really... In his yard? James Raines has a Corvair oh. sitting in his yard that with a blown motor, and I'm like, that would be so sweet to put a Tesla motor in it. Okay. CS. CCT. I don't know what any of those stand for. Dylan, my favorite guitarist built his own guitars a couple of years ago, and he wound some P90s that are voiced like Strat pickups. They sound spot on. Is this something that you could possibly do? I wouldn't. I mean, I could, but I wouldn't because I don't like that. Um, another... Spammer? No, I got that. Um... Okay. Daniel Leonov, any suggestions for an easy to find neck humbucker to match a Lawler Imperial in the bridge? Couldn't find a used neck Imperial where I live for months because of embargo and stuff. Um, whew, a Lawler Imperial. You could probably put one of our DAFs in there. That would work. But if there's embargo stuff, I don't know where you live. Um, yeah, that's the problem. Um, were you finished? I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. 
Rick Nardo. Everyone hates piezo pickups on solid bodies, but I think they're great. Mixing, how do you say that? Am Pie- I piezo. Mm-hmm. And magnetic pickups is great. Opinion. Oh, yeah, do it. Um, I mean, the Majesty pickup, uh, bo- you know, the John Petrucci one, that's really cool. I don't know that people actually hate them. I just think people expect too much out of them. Like, it's not an acoustic guitar, so it's not going to sound like that. But to do cool things with it and make cool sounds, I think it's cool. Um, so Jim Woodward, Woodward is the one that said, good God, that naked guy doesn't give up. <clears throat> then he said, does anyone ever click on that stuff? I mean, is there someone who goes, well, I came here for guitars, but maybe I can meet someone on Tinder. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh-uh. Um, and don't click on them. Oh, and if anybody God. ever sees a contest on YouTube. A contest? Yes. Or any kind of like, hey. Send me $5 and I'll send you whatever, unless it's visibly coming out of my mouth right here like this, do not do it because there's been some scammers. There's oh. been a bunch of people talking about that. Um, I just haven't addressed it myself. Another quick question, David Kornblatt, Marshall or Friedman Amps? Uh, the Marshall BE50 is pretty sick, or the Friedman BE50 is pretty sick. Ken, have you checked out K-Line Guitars? A few years ago, yeah. I have. Um, Brian, I still don't know how to say that word. We need some wide range pickups made by Dylan with uh, Cunif pull pieces. We could do that, but they would be not cheap. I found a supplier for them, and they are not cheap. Daniel says I live in Russia. Shipping is impossible is possible, but tricky from what I've heard. Was considering DAF indeed. Thanks for answering. Yeah, dude. I, tell you what. Yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I can't ship to Australia right now, so it's it's stupid, and New Zealand because of COVID stuff. But yeah, man, I'd love to ship to you, but I, I don't think I can right now. All right, I'm only twelve minutes late, but that is uh, it's a good place to stop. All the questions. Awesome, you guys. This has been super fun. Uh, thanks for keeping it like super spirited and cranking the entire time. Thanks for being patient with spam bots. Yeah, we we really like it when it's fun like this when everybody's just in there just jamming and it in you almost have to cut it off. It's like really really fun like that. Um, and yeah, it's fun. It is. We got some cool videos coming out, and you guys gave me a couple ideas for some other videos tonight too. So, um, and I've got some really cool stuff coming to review. The um, MGK guitar is going to be Monday. We've got some other pickup stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, some other guitar stuff, some other amp stuff. It's going to be a shipping fool. Yeah, oh man. Yeah, we're going to be going to the post office a lot next.